Dudes, what's happening? It's Trent, and today I want to talk to you really briefly about uh, preparing your artwork for print and some of the, the tips that you're going to need in order to uh, effectively get your artwork ready for print. And that means using templates and uh, what kind of modes and uh, things to keep in mind when you're preparing your files. So the first thing that you're going to want is some kind of a template. You're going to want to know what it is that you're working with. You're going to want to know the dimensions and decide this before you even begin. Uh, you're going to need to know what the trim size is and you're going to need to know what the uh, the spine thickness is and things like that. And so what you can do is uh, you can go to any print site. Uh, one of the ones that I used to use is psprint.com. Uh, now I am in no way sponsored by them or anything like that. It's just one that I used to use and I had good experience with them in the past. I don't know how they are now, but one of the nice things they have is uh, they have all their templates. So you can go to uh, products and go to booklets. And if you scroll down to standard booklets, you can find a, a, this would be a spot where you'll be uploading your files so you don't have to mail anything in, which is nice. This is the modern age. <laughs> we have emails and uploading services. Go to print guidelines, scroll down to the ones that you want, and just go ahead and download that template. And then open it up in Photoshop. You're going to get a lot of information um, within that if it's, if it's a good template. Now, the things to keep in mind here are you've got your bleed, which is what that basically means is like this is an area where the printer is not going to be super precise. They might uh, trim off part of your artwork. You just don't want to have anything important in that bleed area. Uh, the cut line is pretty much where they're planning to kind of roughly have the, the knife go down and slice the pages. Uh, the safety is just to sort of ensure like don't put any text outside of this safety line. Now let's say that you're working with a, um, a back cover as well. You're doing a wraparound cover for your book. You'll probably want to open up both. What I would do is I'd probably take this and say, uh, stretch my canvas size to 200% uh, in width so that I can have my back cover, copy out the front cover, paste it into the, the right side because of course that's the way that a book would close if you were to open it up. Uh, if there is bleed, if it's like over a certain number of pages, they call that the spine. So you might have to actually make this a little wider and create a little space in between for the spine. But if you're just doing something like a 32 page book, you probably won't have a spine. It might be stapled, saddle stitched or something like that. Find out a little bit about what your printer, how they're going to be putting it together. Find out the spec specs and get the appropriate template for what your product is going to be. Tip number two is going to be resolution, and uh, we want to just make sure that our image size is is sort of working appropriately. Um, this is, by the way, this is the easy way to do everything using templates and whatnot. You could actually do measurements yourself and set this to inches, and then calculate out a quarter inch uh, thick plus the one eighth uh, inch bleed for the correct print ready artwork. Um, but essentially your print sizes are going to be somewhere around these numbers. If you're working with print, you always want to make sure you're working with at least a resolution of 300. Never ever do something that's at like a 72, uh, 72 pixels per inch resolution for print. It's just going to come out blurry and muddy and you'll have big problems. Also keep in mind that your image is going to have to be in CMYK. So you want to go up here to image mode and then switch that to CMYK. Now, uh, it's going to ask you if you want to flatten it and, you know, if you want to convert the file format. You'll notice that painting in CMYK gets slightly different results. And I won't, I won't dig into that too much. Uh, you have a diff you'll notice you have like a different color picker and things like that. Um, but we're not going to dig into all that too much. This is just about kind of creating print ready files. You can convert an RGB image into CMYK right before you go to print. Also, keep in mind your page count. Everything needs to be in fours. So you either have a four page book, eight page book, uh, whatever, 12 and then 16 and then 32, whatever. It always has to be divisible by four uh, just to make sure that because, of course, each page is going to have, uh, you know, both sided would be one page, two page, flip it over, three page, four page. Tip number three is going to be to set up your template in Photoshop or whatever program you're using appropriately so that you can uh, plan out the layout and where your artwork is going to fit, where your logos are going to fit and things like that. So what we do is we, uh, we go ahead and we grab uh, everything that's Command A, Command C, Command V, or just duplicate your layer 
And make sure that your background layer is um, just white. That's fine. If it's just white, it's fine. And then uh, set that, uh, go to your uh, template layer and uh, back it off to like maybe 30% or something like that. Grab your artwork that you want to use. In this case, I'm using some World of Twilight Monk art artwork. This is a uh, art book that I would like to someday get into print, but I'm working on a lot of things and uh, eventually that'll happen. But we drop in our artwork, make sure that it's on the layer below. Uh, you can see here where we can see that we've got our bleed area is going to cut off some of that artwork. Now I don't mind because nothing that's really on the outside there is super important. So we want to make sure that our logo doesn't go on the outside of the bleed area as well. And we can of course um, we can of course toggle on and off our our uh, template to just double check that everything's kind of working out okay. Um, now I, I like to arrange my windows when I'm working with multiple files. Photoshop can be a bit of a pain, especially if you've got uh, especially if you've got a little MacBook or a smaller screen. This is a 15 inch screen, so I tile everything. Uh, that way I can grab whatever window I want, and if I hit F, then it uh, it switches between modes so that I can grab uh, layer effects or things like that and drag them over. So for instance, like if I really want to get that old paper look. Um, and drag that in. I can just do that. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you could potentially just draw on the, you know, under the template or keep this file um, as your working copy. And I've done that when I do covers like the, the Warcraft Travelers covers, I just have the template um, and, I, and I paint into the template before I even begin. I mean, for example, I, I would have my template layer at the top. I'd probably create, like, uh, use Command G to create a little folder and call that the template. Most of my Photoshop files have a template folder, and then I can toggle anything that's in that folder. If it's uh, like, say, I've got a little note that says, uh, "Hey, you know, keep in mind that," uh, oh, let's say that I've got another layer and and uh, I've got a little like, you know, another element on my cover that I need to be able to move around, but I want to be able to switch off all of that template. I can easily do that uh, because it's grouped within a layer within Photoshop. Uh, but what I would do is I would sometimes I would just straight up have my template and I, I would use this as my painting and I would say, all right, well, I want to have this like, you know, kind of flowing out here. This is bad. I'm not really drawing right now, but um. And then I could kind of like mock up and say, yeah, okay, so I want to kind of plan this in to, to, to work like that. And then I just keep double checking by switching on my template layer. Uh, like, oh, okay, this is where the UPC thing is going to go. And this is the, uh, the, sh the shipping <laughs> if they have like a little um, required uh, ISBN number or things like that. Uh, all of that is within that template that I can switch on and switch off. And then I've got my multiple layers. Oops. I did not want that to be, yeah, I do want that to be there. And then, uh, of course, you know, all this could be in its own grouped layer as well, and this could be labeled the artwork. So you've got a nice clean file that you can move things around in. Technically speaking, like that logo could be in the, the template uh, folder within Photoshop, so I could switch all that off. My little text elements. All those things can be within that template fo file uh, that you can switch on and switch off. And they're all editable because they're on their own layers within that folder. If that, if you can wrap your noggin about around that whole thing. Tip number four has less to do about the format itself or preparing your files uh, as much as it is about organizing your progress. And this is sort of a, a technique that I've devised. It's sort of a pagination outline. So what I've done is I've created this little template that I know my book is going to be roughly just over a hundred pages, right? So uh, I would create this little template that allows me to sort of break down and say, okay, I wanna have, um, you know, 10 or so pages. This is uh, 10 rows of 10 uh, pages sort of roughed in. And then as I sort of make progress or finish on pages, uh, I can segment them out and say, okay, so these 10 or whatever number of pages are gonna be uh, for that format, uh, that type of of content and then I've got these on these little thumbnails that I can kind of move around so this way I can easily say you know what I think I want to 
I'm gonna move the character section to after some story section at the beginning or something like that. And that way I kind of get a, a view of the whole project. I can also go in and color code these on another layer. This shows me how far along the progress is. So uh, this is just my method. I, I mark the page with a green block if the page is completely done as is. And uh, if it's still work in progress or it may be cut or something like that, or it just needs a lot of work, uh, I mark it as an orange page. That way, if I'm looking at the project and it's like I've got it scheduled, okay, it's Tuesday at whatever hour of the day where I'm free to work on my Art of Twilight Monk art book, then I can just open up this page and I can immediately go, okay, so I still need to work on that Slime King page. Um, yeah, there's that. Do I feel like working on an environment page? Do I Did I have an idea? for how I wanted to do that that page, the monastery. And I think this, this hasn't been updated in a little while because I've done some new artworks that haven't been updated in the art book yet. Uh, but this gives you an, exa an, an example, an idea of how I organize all of my content before anything is ready to go into a final product. And it gives me a scope of what the whole project is so that that way I can kind of look at it and go, oh man, that's a lot more work than I was ready to do. Or, oh man, my uh, my world map section, my environment section isn't thick enough compared to some of the other elements. Or uh, if somebody were to pick this up for the first time, what's the first elements they're going to see? You know, that sort of a thing. And uh, it gives me a, a, an idea of the full scope of the project. And that helps out a lot. For the last tip, I want to suggest that you really think about the scope of what it is that you're making. If this is your first art book or short story, just sit down to do a little 10 pager uh, or eight pager. Don't uh, set your expectations too crazy high. Um, also consider that uh, you may want to keep a very low print run. But my point is to keep in mind if you're if you're kind of a small fry or you're you're just getting out of a college or art school or something like that, you know, then you really might need to consider. Well, maybe you know, I, I might only sell 50 copies of this or 100 copies of this. You know, I mean, I need to make it cheaper or easier for people to get. Which brings me to my next point. These days, I mostly just do either print on demand or I'll do PDFs, digital distribution. So. Uh, for example, print on demand means that uh, a person can buy a physical copy. Uh, it's a little bit more of a cost and I really don't make any profit on those. It's really just so that people can get a physical copy of the, the books that I've made, such as the Twilight Monk comics or some of my sketchbooks. And uh, they're able to order them directly. I don't really deal with the distribution or mailing of these things. Sometimes if you're doing a print copy of something, you have to mail them out. And uh, sometimes the recipient doesn't get it. And if you're only making a dollar profit per book and uh, you have to run to the post office every other day because they get impatient because it didn't ship in time, uh, if you're working a full-time job in video games or something like that at the same time, it can be really exhausting to try to track down where that package went to and uh, whether or not the person actually received it or they're just saying that they didn't so they can get an extra copy. Uh, and it ultimately ends up being a very exhausting venture. So I suggest that you consider just doing PDFs or do a print-on-demand service such as lulu.com or um, there are several others. I like to use uh, Gumroad, and in fact, uh, the choice that I've made for uh, the World of Twilight Monk art book presently is through Gumroad. Uh, there are a lot of advantages to doing a Gumroad PDF, digital only, uh, art book. And uh, one of those advantages is that I can continue to update it. So since I initially released the World of Twilight Monk art book, I've added about 50 pages since I started. And I'm continuing to add to it and increase the value of it. And the price goes up a little bit every time I add more chunks of content to it. But it's an ever-evolving, ever-expanding guide to a world that I'm creating. And it's a really fun way to interact with people and get feedback. So if I make spelling errors, it's not in print forever. It's something that I can go in and edit the PDF and update it. And then I send out a little notification to everybody that, hey, there's a new updated version with here are the new pages that were added with new artwork and new character bios and all that fun stuff. So consider all those things before you do your, your world guide, before you do your art book, before you do your sketchbook. And I can tell you from experience, man, even some of these rock star artists that I know, it's not easy to, to sell print copies anymore. A lot of times people just want to read something on their PDF reader or their, uh, their iPads or their iPhones. 
And uh, I personally, I kind of prefer the digital. It saves on paper and it saves on storage. Uh, carrying around a thousand copies of something or keeping that stored in your garage, if you live in California or somewhere where it's expensive to have storage space, that can be a bit of an emotional burden as well as a physical burden. You don't want to have to uh, rent out extra space just to store all the copies of books that uh, uh, sometimes sell and sometimes don't. You never really know. Ideally, I think it would be nice if uh, at some point a, uh, a publisher did decide, hey, you know what, we want to do a higher uh, run print, a physical print run of your book. That would be great. But uh, if it's one thing that I learned from working at Blizzard, it's like focus on the thing that you do. Uh, Blizzard didn't ever really want to get into making t-shirts themselves, so they worked with Jinx. They just licensed it out for people who specialize in that field to do that thing. I gotta wrap this up because the mowers are out, the leaf blowers are out. I don't know if that's uh, messing with the audio too bad. Uh, somebody said that I drone on a little bit too much in my videos, <laughs> but for every one of those jerk butt comments that I get, I get about a thousand comments from people saying that this is very useful information to them and uh, those are the guys that I'm doing this for. So I appreciate you guys leaving such positive and encouraging comments in the uh, in the comment section. There's, a, there's anything you want to know about from uh, the lifestyle of doing comic books, making comic books, making art for video games, or uh, anything like that. You want to know a good way to cook up a steak, man. Brother, I got you cup. Just uh, leave the questions in the comment section below the video. Uh, this was a highly requested video, and uh, I realized that I, I'm, I'm sharing a lot of my personal experiences here, and, and uh, there's a lot to say about it. Um, so hopefully it is of use to you and hopefully it helps you along. If you did decide to make a book, please do tag me in your tweets, uh, tag me in your YouTube channel where you're showing it off. I want to see it, man. I want to see your art books and, uh, until next time, dudes, I'll catch you in the next one. All right. Ciao.